Today, I'm gonna to be going for the Platinum Trophy and Secret Stance in what could very well be Game of the Year in 2024, Black Myth Wukong. The Platinum has seven missable trophies during your progression, and the Secret Stance that you can unlock in this game requires you to complete and beat every single secret boss three times in New Game Plus playthroughs, including Chapter 6s. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have a mental illness. The game starts off with us playing as the Great Sage himself, Sun Wukong facing off against Erlang, where we get defeated and sealed in a rock on Mount Huago. This is where we get our first trophy. Hearing the story from the old monkey about Sun Wukong's legend and how someday someone will arrive that gathers Wukong's six relics and brings him back to life. We also look exactly like Sun Wukong, so I guess that person's us? Home is behind. The old monkey has told his tale. Onward you must go. Nice. First trophy down. As soon as the game lets us out of the starting area, we get a taste of some of the enemies we'll be fighting in the game with our first boss. Ooh, this guy looks a little bigger. What's up, brother? Bullguard. I think this guy might be a boss. Or like a mini boss. Oh, God. Come on. What just happened? Did I lose? Midway through this encounter, we get introduced to a very important aspect of Black Myth Wukong. Spells. Using spells, transformations, and spirits completely changes how you can play in this game. That's sick. What did I just get? Red Tide spells. This feral flurry intensifies with each fierce thrust. The flames do rise, transform into a wolf gooey, and inflict Scorch Bane on the enemy. You acquire transformations by beating certain bosses or doing quests in the game. And spirits usually come from lesser bosses or enemies on the map. Pairing the right two together can really help you in your playthrough and boost your stats in some cases. Dude, that is such an OP ability. Such an OP ability. Come on. There we go. Got him. Got him! Suck it! Immediately following this boss battle, I had enough sparks to finally level myself up, and I threw it into what I felt like I might need the most in this playthrough. Here we go. Spark of Thought. Nothing sparks your talents more than a spark of thought. Right here might be a good time to mention that Black Myth Wukong has over 80 bosses in this game. Because of that, I won't be covering all the bosses in this video, otherwise it would just be a boss simulator. Instead, I'm going to be covering bosses that are pertinent to the story, or I just had a really fun time playing against as I went through this game and progressed. Knowing that, let's jump into our first boss. Yo, Ling, Ling Zuzi. What is this? Okay, that was the wrong time to drink the gourd. That was the wrong time to drink the gourd. <laughs> Woo, we're so close, we're so close. We're so close. Oh, shit. He's he's really hurt. Oh, he was he was really hurt. Not anymore. No. Come on. Come on. Dude, he was so close. Oh, baby. Let's go! Once we beat the wolf, I move forward and meet an important character in this story, Shen Monkey. Shen allows us to buy gourds, which we can use to recover HP, and soaks that we can put inside of our drinks to enhance them and give us better stats. Brew of Bravery. Nice. Immediately falling Shen is the first actual challenge of the game. This was the first of many times I wondered if I'd actually be good enough to get this platinum. Ooh, we're doing pretty good right now, but this can change. That doesn't look good. Whatever he's doing. Crescent Moon Slash or some shit like that. That's probably what that move is called. Oh, dude, come on, let's go. We gotta get this guy first try. Let's go. Two phases. Oh, shit. This guy don't want the smoke, man. <laughs> Suck my pull. I'm going to give this guy the pull right now. He's recovering health. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Did I get him? Holy shit. Did I just win? <laughs> After 
I was fighting the white clad noble, I moved on to the next part of this trophy hunt. This game has secret areas in every chapter that heavily build on the lore within the game and are required to get the platinum trophy. For chapter one, I need to ring three bells found around the map before doing the final boss or the secret area disappears. Once we've completed the bells, we face off against Elder Jinchi in an alternate realm. Come on. Let's go, Yagwai. Elder Jin Cheek. Trophy earned, Temple of Taint. Once we've beaten Elder Jinchi, I continue to make my way up the mountain where we fight a super buff meatball Krillin. Oh, dude, we're doing really good here. Okay. I think I got him here. Let's go! Let's go! When we beat him, Krillin flies off to the top of the mountain where we get to see his true form, the Black Bear Gwai. What up, bear? Get back. You up. Yeah, the, this phase I hate. I I can't tell where that fire is. All right, let's freeze him. I got no health. So we're literally... Get back back okay whoo got him let's go let's go blazing black wind defeating the black bear guai reveals that this guai was guarding one of sun wukong's relics waiting for one that was worthy to come along to be able to absorb. Each of the relics we obtain gives you an additional buff that gives us a portion of the Great Sage's power. And now we have one out of the 18 that I will need to unlock the secret stance in this game. Chapter two sends us to the Yellow Sands Desert, where I met some of my favorite bosses in the game. Tigers are my favorite animals, and there are a lot of them here. Tragically, we find out the king of this land and his sons were turned into a rat by the Yellow Wind Sage the main boss in this area who holds Wukong's second relic. Traveling around the Sandgate village, I meet the Zodiac deity Zudok, who is basically like this holy drug dealer that can boost your stats with pills. He also gives you the majority of your recipes for crafting medicine, which allows us to get another trophy. That's pretty cool. Creative concoction. Onyx are well and good, but not to be worked wolf like food the first boss that we come across is the aforementioned king of the rats this boss kicks off a series of missable items on our way to the platinum besides just secret areas you see if you kill the second son before the dad the dad will escape and you won't be able to get the spirit that we need and if you kill the dad first well the second son turns into a super saiyan and rages oh Oh, dude, I almost had him. There we go. He's going Super Saiyan, bro. This should be the end for him. This should be it. Maybe not. Pretty close, though. There we go. That's the end. Woo! Let's go. Now we should get the essence. We also get to start a rock Pokemon battle where Shingadang, a secret boss, beats the rock Vanguard, which is a boss that we need to pass a door later on in this level. Dude, this is like a Pokemon battle. Let's go. <laughs> All right. As I approach the Crouching Tiger Temple, I run into one of my absolute favorite bosses, the Tiger Vanguard, where you roll up in him drinking the blood of his victims out of a giant pool and immediately get blasted by a barrage of punches. This fight was one of the most punishing and rewarding fights that I've ever had in the game. Oof. Come on. Come on. Come on, clones, attack! Let's 
Let's go! Oh, yeah! Tiger King Vanguard down. Beating the Tiger Vanguard allows us to start the secret area of Chapter 2, which involves completing the Drunken Boar's questline that ends with us battling him. Much like in Chapter 1, we travel to an alternate dimension in the past, where we meet the original Tiger Vanguard, who we learn Sun Wukong actually killed. I, uh... I wonder if that's why his son went crazy? Further into the zone, we meet the boss we came here to fight, Fubon. A giant beetle that gets furious when a drum set up high on Yellow Wind Ridge is played. At the top of the cliff, we meet Royal Sage, who has been tasked with ridding the wasteland of this creature that's been destroying villages and killing local residents. So we grab our pole and get ready to help. There we go, it's almost dead. Here we go, Fubon. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Shifting sands. A beetle came from Jump Beat's call and left with waves, gentle fall. Let's go, baby. With the second boss down, it was now time to take on the Yellow Wind Sage. We find out, however, that the sage the chapter has been talking about is the Royal Sage from the past that just helped us beat Fubon. Bring it on, BZ. Whoop. Back up. Oh, shiitakes. Oh, I need that. I need that. Let's go. Come on! Come on! Ah! Heal! Let's go! Ayo! <laughs> A great gust! There will be more sages if their maker still engages. Beating the Yellow Wind Sage gets us our next relic, and we can continue on to Chapter 3. Ah, Chapter 3. This one took me the longest out of any of the chapters, mostly because of the Pagoda Realm. That area is a giant piece of sh**. We make our way to a lake where we meet a baby Buddha who releases a dragon out of his seed sack. This guy reminded me of Shenron so freaking much when I started battling him. I don't know how to stop that hit, dude. I did not know how to stop that. Oh, I missed it somehow that time. Whoop. Woo! What's it doing? Stay away from me. Come on. Oh, let's go! Woo! Heck yes. Dude, let's go! After we beat Shenron's brother, we get sent to the Pagoda Realm. You know that area I mentioned earlier? Yeah, that one. This zone had one of the worst missable items in the entire game. You have to defeat nine Lantern Wardens before beating the boss at the top. And to make it worse, they only spawn every minute and a half before disappearing again for three minutes. When they do spawn, your life also decreases as you get inflicted with a curse. So running into additional enemies while encountering the wardens pretty much means death. This part alone took me five to six hours to beat. Uh, but hey, we got the lantern. Got it. Auspicious lantern, there's the final one, baby. To leave the prison, we have to beat the boss at the top that stops the lanterns from spawning. Woo, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was the end right there. That was the end. There we go. Got him. Woo! First try. One for one, baby. Immediately leaving the prison, we run into Turtle General, a giant ass turtle. And we have an epic battle with another celestial dragon, Kang Jin Star. I hate these 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 moves. Get me every time, bro. I feel like I just can't dodge those moves. I don't know why. 
every single freaking time there's a move where someone disappears and becomes like a cloud done i can't dodge it yeah here we go see every time bro every time i can't dodge that damn shit okay do some damage come on Woo! we're doing good i did not do very much damage Come on. Oh, I'm gourdless now. Ooh, my favorite part. Oh, we dodged one, bro. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we got her. Woo. That was a hard fight. With the dragon down, Turtle General and our new friend Baje take us to Northern Bitter Lake, where we can find our next missable part of this level. A spirit from Apamorana Bat that disappears if you beat the final boss. Apamorana Bat. Nice. This is what I needed to do. I needed this guy. This is unmissable. That was not what I wanted to do. There we go. Got him. Much like chapter one and two, this zone also has a secret area. However, it is much more missable than the previous ones. You have to do a series of quests for a treasure hunter to complete it. The first requires you save the man at his first location, and later in the level, we have to give him some warmth with our Ring of Fire ability. During the conversation with him, he mentions seeing a boy jump down to a melon patch, and we have to find this location. When we arrive at the melon patch, we discover that this man has been deceiving us the whole time and is actually the green-capped marshalist. Who's there to kill us? Ah. Yeah, two of them is way harder. You got to keep track of both. That ability is so annoying. I think he's going to turn into the, uh, the hula hoops now. Yep. Oh, no, wait. That's not the hula. There we go. Let's go. Watch him have a stage two. Hardy, nothing more. I've done as our brother asked. Till we meet again. Once we beat the green cap marshalist, we meet the Buddha, who gives us the spellbinder spell and completes the chapter three treasure hunt secret area. In chapter three, there's also a very important hidden village called the Zodiac Village. You get access to it by defeating Chen Long. Here, you meet every single NPC that's important to your character's progression, including Chen, who holds seeds for you so you never run out of ingredients. No harvest without hard work. And Yin Tiger, who gives you an extra curio slot and upgrades your armor for you. It might befit you well. With the secret boss complete and our items upgraded, it was now time to take on chapter three's big bad, Yellow Brow. In every chapter, I seem to struggle with one boss. And in chapter three, it was this guy. His gold Buddha stage was such a pain in the <laughs> Not to mention, he has not one, not two, but three phases. I don't know what he's gonna do, but we're just gonna, you know what, I was gonna wait. We're just gonna go in on him. A lot of shock damage but i'm not gonna lose to you when you're on like two hp come on there we go after you defeat this first stage he sucks you into his seed sack for the next round thankfully stage two is pretty easy it's the next phase that sucked all right brother really i froze him in this state Shit. He froze me. What the shit? My clones are attacking me. What? Come on. Oh, let's go. Oh. Oh, dude. Oh. 
Nifty nonsense. We got our trophy. With Yellow Bro down, we get our third relic and progress to the next chapter, which changes up the biome quite a bit. Immediately in chapter four, we get introduced to the Spider Sisters, the daughters of the Violet Spider, who is Bajay's old lover. Following the introduction, we're thrown into our first boss battle with the second sister. We quickly dispatch the second sister, but before we move forward, I wanna talk about this chapter a little more. You see, chapter four has the most missable items out of any chapter in this game. Not only is there a secret area, but there are missable journal entries, spirits, items, and armor pieces if you do things out of order and don't complete the game as they want you to. So needless to say, running willy-nilly through this zone is not an option, and I definitely googled the shit out of all the items in this map. First, we head to the Venom Daoist, where you have to knock off four of his arms before killing him to get his armor guard. To do this, you have to hit him in the back until you see an arm fall off. Once four have fallen, you can take him out, but he's also the first step to getting into the secret area of this zone. I, th I hope I, I did it. Please. Venomous arm guard. Oh, let's go. We got it. Going back to the main story, our boy Baje has been captured by the Spider Sisters and put under some weird mind control, bringing him to the Violet Spider, where we discover she wants his seed sack and is then going to devour him. With Baje under control, they send him out to attack us to prevent him from leaving again like he did with Sun Wukong. After defeating Baje, we run into a different area for phase two of this fight, where we see his transformation into a big boar. Okay. Get him, clones. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's go. Eventually, we free Baje from the mind control. However, the Violet Spider Spider-Man's his ass up higher into the level, and now we have to go save him for a second time. With the defeat of the Violet Spider, we can now progress to where a large majority of the missables are on this map. But before we do, I want to wrap up a quest line that spans the first four chapters. In chapter two, we're able to get something called the long scale. This allows us to visit the dragons of this game. Defeating all four nets you a trophy. The only issue is this last guy, yellow long, is literally one of the hardest bosses in the game and can be found in this chapter. Come on, get ice sheet off. Okay, here we go. Oh, suck it long. Come on. Holy shit, bro. Come on. Get him. Whoop. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. No! 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 Stay away! I don't want the smoke! I don't want it, but you do! Oh ho ho ho! Woo! The Sire of Sons, dude! Oh my god! With the Yellow Dragon defeated, I start working on the missables again. The first one I tackle is the purple altar strewn around the map. We have to find four of them, and when we do, we have a short boss battle that introduces us to the character Crane Immortal, which we need for a journal entry trophy that requires us to complete all journal entries. If we beat the boss before doing this quest, the fourth altar is inaccessible for some reason. With the shrine's done, I went to open the secret area, which requires me to defeat the Venom Taoist again. This fight was just as simple as the first time. However, now we're able to access Purple Cloud Mountains. Inside this secret area, I have to get two journal entries from missable bosses, a gourd, a spell, and a soak that we don't have access to once we beat the secret boss. The first boss I decided to tackle was the Scorpion Lord, which is undoubtedly the harder of the two missable trophies. We roll up on him, drinking his gourd's worth on a building. To start the encounter, we have to break some pots outside of his temple. To be honest, being in my 30s, I can kind of relate to this shit. If someone just came up to me and broke shit at my place while I was enjoying some drinks, these hands will be rated E for everyone as well. Come on. Oh, 
Oh, let's go. Oh, man. Let's go. Zerg him. Oh, we zerged him. Let's go. <laughs> With the Scorpion Lord down, I went to face Taoist Me. And this fight was, in my opinion, kind of a joke. The final boss of the secret area is the Dust Veil. Defeating him gives me a vessel that makes the end boss pretty laughable during the second phase. The biggest issue is this guy's second phase himself is, uh, it's pretty beastly. No heals. We're doing this raw, baby. Yikes, bro. Rod, it'd be dirty. Like it always does. Come on, get him down. There we go. Woo! Oh, holy crap. He's going to jump at me now. Going to jump at me, maybe. Woo, we did it. So many, dude. Oh, yeah. Suck it, boy. No. Oh, my God. We missed it. Get out of there. Go. Run. Run for your life, monkey. Shit. This is some bullshit boss, bro. Oh my God. Oh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Come on. Let's go. Woo. Oh, the cockerel crowed. Once Dustville was defeated, it was time to face the final boss of this level. During the cutscene, we learn that he's gifted the relic that he holds to the Violet Spider, but he sucks it out of her, which ends up killing Bajay's lover, and he powers up for our fight. Thankfully, the Spider Sisters, including Wukong's girlfriend, help us in this battle. Oh, wasted, bro. All right, we'll take level three. We'll take level three. We'll take level three, and we will see you on the other side. Come on. Come on. Get him. Get him. He's so close. Let's go! Ah, oh, behold and betray. Trophy earned. Let's go. With the 100 eyed Taoist defeated, it was time to head to chapter 5, which creates an awesome change in biomes for us. The Flaming Mountains hold three missable items that must be obtained. One of them is the secret area, and the other two are consecutive quests that have to be completed in each chapter before moving on to the next. We'll get into those later. While traveling through the mountains, we meet a fox named Ping Ping. We have to save her from two of the goofiest looking bosses in the game. But once we do, we learn that she's the daughter of the Bull King. With the fox princess saved, we follow her up the mountain where we meet Rakshasi and the Flame Keeper, which results in a boss battle in one of the most beautiful environments in this game, in my opinion. We also have a tragic end to a side character named Matiamba that we will talk about shortly. Ugh. 
There we go. With his first and second phases complete, we now face the true boss, the Ying and Yan fish. Come on. Hmm. Come on. I think this will do it. Let's go. Let's go. With the fish defeated, I can move on to the secret area of this zone. For this mission, there is a pretty sad ending to a new friend that we meet. The quest starts when you talk to the Pale Axe Stalwart early on in the level. He asks you to defeat five different colored carts. While you're doing this, however, you also need to come back and speak with this character to progress the story. When we make it to the final cart, we find out that our new friend has been defeated and is in the mouth of the cart. Pretty freaking sad, man. We dispatch the golden cart, and as a last act of service, the Pale Axe Stalwart allows us to enter into the secret area before dying. Inside this zone, you get a couple of items that are pretty important to the completion of this Platinum Trophy, the Iron Bull King Horns and Celestial Ribbons. We need eight horns to complete all armor sets and weapons. And unfortunately, you only get four in a single playthrough. So, uh, yeah. Also, we have to face off against the only boss that made me rage quit this game. Not the secret boss. Not the final chapter boss. No. The mother f***ing Bishui Beast. This guy is aggro as it's just the right amount of difficult and it like gives it to you in the right spots you know what i'm saying like you'll be like just about ready to give up and all of a sudden you'll win because you'll figure it out are you sure about that oh it like straight jumps out no 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 ah i lose ah god damn it no! Fuck! Okay, I'm done. That's it. I'm done. I'm done for the night. That's it. I can't do this anymore tonight. That is literally... I can't. Alright, here we go. One. Oh. Oh. Mm, dude, let's go. We got him. Whew, frost and flame. Dude, that was so hard. That was so hard. <laughs> With the Bishui Beast down, I head to the top of the mountain where we meet the Bull King and learn that Ping Ping is not actually Ping Ping, but the Red Boy. We take on the Red Boy and compared to the last fight we just did, this is a walk in the park. Whoever did, whoever subbed, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm locked in right now. You rock. Here we go. That should be it. There we go. We got him. Let's go. Blazer. You rock, Blazer. With Red Boy defeated, Bull King starts to give us the relic he was holding in his stomach. He's been waiting for someone that could carry on Sun Wukong's will, since they were best friends in the past. However, Red Boy steals the relic and transforms into the Yaksha King. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Let's go! Suck it, Yaksha King. That's right, baby. Flaming Fury. New relic obtained. Grieved body. We're ready for the next chapter. Treasure Trove. What is that? All the four vessels now belong to me. I don't know what that is. All the four vessels? Oh, well, we just got a trophy. <laughs> With the Yaksha King down, we get our fifth relic and can finally return to Mount Huago, where the final boss of the game is. Before we go, however, I need to go back to chapter five to wrap up some unfinished business. You see, the horse guy that we fought in the Ying and Yang boss battle is actually a reoccurring character throughout the game. You meet him in chapter one, which sets him on his journey. 
and then subsequently save him in every single chapter thereafter unfortunately in chapter 5 he gets killed and eaten by one of the cart monsters we saw a reanimated body in our fight. Completing his quest in every chapter allows you to obtain his transformation spell in chapter 5, which also gives us a trophy. A Dark Thunder, urge fulfilled. Nice. With my life, I'll repay the title he gave me. Hell yeah. Additionally, throughout every chapter, there's an old man who in chapter 1 gives you the ability to absorb spirits with your gourd. If you find and speak with him in every chapter, he'll upgrade your gourd to the maximum level. Doing this adds another trophy to our list. Here we go. Let's go, man. Supreme Gourd, always accompanied. With those two trophies down, I head to Mount Huago finally to get a couple additional trophies before progressing the story. The first one is a trophy for defeating all the frogs found in every level. Here we go. Boom! Ba Lang Baba is down. The Claimer of Frogs. There's also a trophy for collecting all the curios, which because I was so paranoid about missing something, I had every curio in every zone before I moved on. There we go. Boom. A curios collection. Let's go. Every rare runner the world can offer collected and kept. After completing those trophies, I go take out four Wukong's generals to get access to the Great Sage's armor. With the armor in hand, quite literally, we go get the fifth relic, the Jingle Bong Staff, which is one of the coolest staffs in this game, and gets us another trophy. Okay, so do I... Guardian of Gear, what is this? You fully fitted, now swing that staff and fight. Now it's time to fight the secret boss of this game. Erlang Shen. To put it brief, this boss is hard as f but it's possible if you have the right build, which I didn't actually use because I felt like I should use the Wukong armor. It definitely made it a lot harder. Here we go. Damn it, dude. Mm. Shit, 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 shit. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. Shoot. Ah. Ah. Let's go. We got him. Let's go. We got him. After the initial battle, there's a giant kaiju fight with the gods that allows us to earn a trophy for completing all the secret zones and bosses. Come on. Come on. Mm. Here we go. We got him. Let's go. Hell yeah. Meet the match. With Erling down, it was now time to take on the final boss, Wukong Shell. We hit each other. Mm. Oh. Come on. Let's go. Yes. A duel of destiny. Hell yeah.
part two, cleanup. Because of how paranoid I was of missing things in my first playthrough, there really wasn't much left to do in the post game. The first thing I decided to tackle was meditation spots. I only needed two to get the trophy. There it is. There's the there's the meditation spot. All right, so this should get us a trophy right here. Just getting this final meditation spot. There we go. Scenic Seeker. Find all the meditation spots, baby. With meditation spots out of the way, I moved towards completing all the spirits in the game, which also gives you a trophy. In total, there are 54 spirits, and I needed five of them to complete my set. That is the guy. That's the guy. Got him. This might be the last one. Maybe? Oh, it is. Fickle forms. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now that we had all the spirits done, I tackled what I thought would be the longest hunt. You need to get all of the special pills that you can obtain after a boss battle. There are 15 in total throughout the game, and I only needed one more, but I had no idea which one I had missed. Fortunately for me, I went to the right place first because I figured that it was probably in chapter five. Bro, I totally missed. How did I miss this? How did I miss that? medicine meal there's the last one that we needed how did i miss that <laughs> with those out of the way i now started probably my least favorite or second least favorite grind of this platinum the soaks most of the soaks can be found in chests or purchased and those ones are not bad at all but there are some that are tied to rng and those are complete it took me about 10 hours to complete this section, doing a rotation of roaming or between the RNG zones. I started farming seeds as well to try and speed up the process. Eventually I did get them and I was able to get the trophy for collecting all the seeds as well, which gives us an additional soak and cleans up 100% of everything that you can do in a first playthrough. world only the green ones ah every plant in the world is now rooted in my heart now it was time to move on to new game plus part three a new cycle with each successful defeat of the monkey sage you were able to start a new cycle with what we learned in the final chapter we are a reincarnation of wukong however when splitting his relics his mind was lost erlang shen kept those memories for us and every time we defeat him we get a portion of our mind relic back because of this. This is why you need to defeat Erlang three times to gain access to the Wukong stanch, which we are also going for, but for now, back to the Platinum. Essentially, the moment we start our second playthrough, we get three trophies right off the rip. Those high above don't trust me. Six senses secured. There we go. That. Fortress perfected. We're getting all the trophies, dude. Right? Back to back. Master of Magic. <laughs> the next trophy I'm going for is a trophy for completing all gourds and soaks. This trophy becomes available in Chapter 1 after we get the Shen Monkey because he has new items for sale that allows us to finally get this trophy. Quin Tian Gourd. This will buy another Celestial Shoot. Brewer's Bounty. There we go. Once I get to chapter two, I'm able to obtain our next trophy. I just need to get the Zoo Dog and the Cellar Shrine again to purchase the last medicine recipe that gives us the trophy. Or buy. This should be the final one. Confirm. A page preserver. Let's go. Now, there were three. These three trophies were going to be a bit more difficult. I needed to get to chapter four to beat Yellow Long again to craft my final weapon. Come on, one more hit, baby. Let's go. Yep, this should be the final one. Staffs and spears, baby, let's go. In chapter five, to beat the Bishui Beast again to get the final crafting materials to craft the Bull King armor set. Doing so gives us our platinum trophy. Guys, this is gonna give me the platinum trophy. This is gonna get me the platinum trophy. Here we go. 
Bull King's Shan. Woof. Here we go. At that. We're not going to wear it right now, though. Bull King's Bracers. And the Bull King's Greaves. Let's go. That's all mantled with might. And then that should give me the trophy, the platinum. Let's go. Final fulfillment, baby. Hell yeah. Let's go. Well, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm also going for the secret stance. So I had to do Erlang again, which was substantially easier than the first time and the great Sage's Broken Shell. Come on. Oh, we got him. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Sage Monkey. Just let me take the win. Let's go, dude. Beating them again starts my third cycle, and I could go into every single boss fight for the third. However, the game starts to scale enemies. Certain enemies start to feel really strong, while some enemies really feel the same. For example, the white clad noble felt much stronger in my third playthrough than he did in my second or first playthrough. While as something like the Bishui Beast, who I had such a hard time with in the first playthrough, was simple and Erlang Shen was basically the same from the third playthrough to the second playthrough while the Great Sage was substantially harder in my new game plus two playthrough to get the final relic. Defeating them all allows me to earn the last relic that I needed to complete this game and 100% it three times. In total, this took me about 175 hours, but being able to use the Wukong stance anywhere I went was pretty epic.
And with that, I have completed and 100%ed Black Myth Wukong. This game is an absolute masterpiece. My brothers tested you at my behest. Oh, for this day. And only now do I understand that fight. No prestige can shackle him. No band can keep him caged. A mortal death for an unbound mind and will. May you not fail him. I am now at peace. Your journey, though, has just begun. You must have heard tales about him. Some say he helped Tung Monk fetch the scriptures, was granted Buddhahood, and stayed on Mount Lingshan thereafter. Some say it was not him who was granted Buddhahood. The real him was already dead on the journey to the West. Some say that the journey never happened. He is nothing but a monkey who lives in some storyteller's tall tale. <laughs> but now... You will hear a tale which no one has ever known. Does it matter if you become a Buddha? That headband has always been on your head. <laughs> Keep those eyes wide open. Watch me rip it off and break free! Soon, Wukong, when you defied the Celestial Court, I had to seal you beneath the mountains with my immense power. Yet, after enduring punishment, you embraced the dark, uplifted good against evil, and subdued Yao Guais throughout the journey. For your contribution, I now bestow upon you the title of Victorious Fighting Buddha. He defied the Celestial Court, and the Jade Emperor imposed three ordeals. Only when the chicken finishes pecking the rice, the dog laps up the flowers, and the lamp burns through the key, the rain will fall.